everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today with another video about the Chinese drama The Untamed. For this video, I wanted to talk about two characters, Jin Guangyao and Nie Huai Sang. If you're new to The Untamed, this video will contain spoilers. I do have another spoiler free review video about the show, which you can check out right here. All episodes of The Untamed are available on Netflix as well as right here on YouTube. One of the reasons that The Untamed was so successful is because of the richly depicted, well-rounded characters. The antagonists are just as interesting as the good guys. Today, I'll be talking about Jin Guangyao and Nie Huai Sung, why they were driven to do the things they did, and whether they were justified in their actions. Jin Guangshan is the obvious big bad guy of the story, and he has a really interesting background. His name at birth was Meng Yao, and his mother was a prostitute who caught the eye of Jin Guangshan the head of the Jin sect, who was known for being a philanderer and who had children out of wedlock everywhere he went. The Jin sect was very powerful and famous, and the name was associated with prestige and wealth. Meng Yao's mother had always hoped that his father would come back for him and give him a proper upbringing and education, but Jin Guangshan never came back for his son. So Meng Yao grew up in a brothel, ridiculed by everyone for being the bastard who was abandoned. After his mother died, he went to Carp Tower, holding the hairpin that his father had given to his mother as a token of love, hoping that his father would take him in. However, Jin Guangshan refused to even give Meng Yao an audience, and his people threw him down the steps of Carp Tower. After suffering this humiliation, Meng Yao tries to make a name for himself in his service to the other clans. Eventually, he makes his way into the inner circle of Wen Ruohan, the head of the Wen clan, it's around this time that the other four clans launch the campaign to dismantle the Wen clan, and Meng Yao acts as a mole in Wen Ruohan's camp. Eventually, he personally slays Wen Ruohan and establishes himself as the hero of the campaign. After this feat, he is accepted into the Jin family by Jin Guangshan and changes his name to Jin Guangyao. Although Jin Guangyao's position has been dramatically improved, in ancient China, a ruler often has many different sons from different mothers, and the prestige of the son is directly related to the position of the mother. It was clear to Jin Guangyao that his father looked down upon him because his mother was a prostitute. At the time, Jin Guangshan had an heir apparent, Jin Xuan, the true-born son. To secure his position in the Jin family, Jin Guangyao plots to have Jin Xuan killed. During this time, the one person that remains suspicious of Jin Guangyao is Nie Mingjue, the righteous and unyielding leader of the Nie clan who, after the, the demise of the Wen clan, is probably the most powerful warrior in the realm. Jin Guangyao secretly brings about the death of Nie Mingjue through the technique of playing him a certain type of music, which, over the course of months and years of playing, drives him to madness. Finally, Jin Guangyao secures his position as the head of the Jin clan by killing his own father, which he does through forcing one prostitute after another to serve as his father in bed, while his father was already in a frail and sickly state. Having suffered too much ridicule and contempt early in life as the son of a prostitute, Jin Guangyao was willing to do almost anything to achieve what he craved the most, power and respect. He wanted the power to rewrite his own history and to dictate his own narrative. It's important to keep in mind that even though Jin Guangyao was capable of great cruelty, he was not incapable of love and empathy. There were two people that in his life that he loved. One was his mother. I'm not sure if this was made obvious in the show, but the thing that was buried in the Guanyin Temple were his mother's remains. His plan was to take her remains and to flee the country. The other person is Lan Xichen, Lan Wangji's older brother. He was always thankful for the kindness that Lan Xichen showed him back when everyone else looked down on him. And over the years, he and Lan Xichen developed a very close bond. He said at the end in the Guanyin Temple that Lan Xichen was the only person he had never considered harming, and I think that's a true statement. Right before he died, he pushed Lan Xichen away so as to save him from the collapsing temple. Of course, the reason for the downfall of Jin Guangyao is that he was bested by Nie Huai Sang, the brother of Nie Mingjue. In the story of the untamed, Nie Huai Sang, the character, not the actor, definitely takes home the Oscar for best acting because he is the one pulling all the strings that eventually take down Jin Guangyao. Upon a second viewing, I realized that the show actually hinted at his role in the very first episode, 
when you see a shadow of a figure holding a fan immediately before Wei Wuxian is resurrected. When we first meet Nie Hui Sung, he's one of the students at Cloud Recesses listening to lectures on cultivation. He's a playful young man that likes his little buds and his beautiful fans, and he seems super impressed by Wei Wuxian and all of his shenanigans. I do believe that this is his true nature and that he lived a relatively carefree life before his brother died. 16 years later, Wei Wuxian and Lang Wangji meet him again, and by this time, his brother Nie Mingjue has been dead for many years, and he is now the head of the Nie clan and doing a terrible job at it. In fact, he's known in the realm as the Yu Wen San Bu Zhi, or the guy with no answers. To play up his ineptitude, Nie Huai Sung regularly goes to Jing Guang Yao for advice and puts on a show of having no idea to deal with any of the various matters that he's confronted with. In fact, this is a persona that he deliberately crafted for himself so as to not draw the suspicions of Jing Guang Yao. After his older brother's death, he begins suspecting foul play and eventually discovers Jing Guang Yao's involvement. Nie Hui Sung was never very talented as a fighter or as a cultivator, and he knew that he would never succeed if he took on Jing Guang Yao directly by himself. He crafts a plan that begins with convincing Mo Xuan Yu to sacrifice himself and to resurrect Wei Wuxian, hoping that Wei Wuxian could be the instrument that would help him bring about Jing Guang Yao's downfall. It's not until the climatic scene in the temple in episode 49 that it is revealed that Nie Hui Sung is the one behind it all. After Jing Guang Yao loses an arm and is subdued, Nie Hui Sung realizes that Jing Guang Yao may be allowed to escape with his life. He wasn't going to allow that to happen, not after everything he had planned for. So while Lan Xichen has his back turned, he shouts out to warn Lan Xichen that Jing Guang Yao is about to attack. And Lan Xichen, having been tricked too many times already by Jing Guang Yao, swings his sword around and pierces Jing Guang Yao in the heart. In fact, Jing Guang Yao had not made any movement at all. In his last moments, Jing Guang Yao sees Nie Hui Sung for who he really is and realizes that he's been played this entire time. I think an interesting question to ponder is whether Nie Hui Sung was actually justified in taking all of his actions. Now, it's true that he was avenging his brother, and Jing Guang Yao was indisputably an evil man. But Nie Hui Sung acted with a reckless disregard for human life, putting other people directly in the line of danger with the hope that Jing Guang Yao would lash out and expose himself. The skill with which he manipulated everyone around him, including Wei Wuxian, Lan Wangji, and Lan Xichen, to do his bidding makes him a very dangerous character. It's interesting also that in the book, it's hinted very heavily at the end that Nie Hui Sung would become the next Xian Du, or the Cultivator Excellency, the, basically the head of the cultivator world. So perhaps you can make an argument that not everything he did was driven by a desire for revenge, but was also driven by personal ambition. So these are my thoughts on what I consider to be two of the most interesting characters in The Untamed. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear your thoughts about these characters in the comments below. I'll be posting one video a week about Chinese dramas every Sunday evening. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. See you all next time.